Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube. Today, we're gonna talk about breakups. How do we handle one? How do we move forward? Why are we feeling the pain that we're feeling? And just moving on with our damn lives. Whether you're dating a Dusty or whether you just are experiencing any type of rejection, I feel like this is something that will help you out. Let's go into it. How do we handle a breakup and how do we move forward with one? For me, I personally rationalize my breakups. I do that through science and through my understanding of my biology. Going into the history of the human nature, we are designed to be altruistic. Being altruistic is what set us apart from all of the other homo sapiens that existed prior to us. And that has something to do with the frontal lobe of our brain. The frontal lobe is associated with social activity, behaving, making well-rounded decisions. It's also not developed until you're 25, in case you didn't know, but Talking about the frontal lobe, why is it important here? Well, because it's one of the things that set us apart from all the other versions of humans through evolution. The human with the most developed frontal lobe was the one that got to exist today and it's the one that you see everywhere today. A sign of an advanced society is how it treats people that are considered small, physically unable, maybe mentally unable. How do we treat the people that are at the lowest tier? If we treat them well and we help them out in life and, you know, we create systems that elevate them, these features were essential in designing a cohesive community and being able to prosper as a society and into the future. My point in telling you all of this is that every time that you give to somebody or every time you do something nice for someone or you just give from your heart, you literally get a rush of dopamine. And one of the things that people come to me about when it comes to their breakups is how much they gave, how it hurts that they gave so much that they were stupid for doing it and I'm using the fact that we have this as our nature as a reason to tell you to not feel stupid about it we were literally designed to give and to be caring and to be thoughtful and to be nurturing especially women dopamine literally gives us a little rush a little high kind of like crack or cocaine or any other drug or thing that gives you pleasure and we actually become addicted to it this feeling of giving is actually very natural to our human nature. So if you were somebody who ever gave and gave and gave in a relationship, yeah, you probably were in pain after a certain point. Maybe your psyche couldn't take it anymore, but it probably felt really good in the first few halves of it. Now, people who give and give and give, whether they are doing it because they are getting something back, whether they are doing it because they genuinely felt good about it, those are things that we need to differentiate here. Sometimes people will give in a relationship to have a sense of control and to feel like that person's gonna give back to me one day. Why wouldn't they? I did it for them. We, first of all, we can't be giving like that. Second of all, I'm not here to tell you that to never be a giver or to be a lover. I'm telling you to be more selective about who gets access to that side of you. Being giving and being socially cohesive may have been a very necessary feature when we lived in caves or in tribes or in villages. However, in 2021, when in the face of a dusty boy, let his mom be altruistic for him. It's not your job. In the future, let's be very sparing about who we give that energy to. Hey, Black Screen Fleeksy here. I just wanna clarify because I'm in the process of editing this video and I feel like I have more to say on this topic. When you are giving in your generous nature, it should apply to animals, pets, you know, cats, dogs, your children, maybe even your family members if they're not toxic and they are healthy people. On a macro level, like your city or your local government, I think it's actually a beautiful thing to give and to be somebody who is involved in social work or in charity. However, do not ever see another man who you're trying to win the romantic affections of as a charity to give and give and give into, hoping that one day it will come back to you because it's definitely not going to work that way. There is probably going to be the outlier few who say, oh, but I gave to my man for three years and now we're together for 10 years and he pays me back through love and affection and paying for everything. And that is absolutely fantastic and amazing. However, I'm not going to sell that as an experience that everybody can have because unfortunately, it's not something that is something that everyone can have. It's not a guarantee that that's going to happen. And it's actually kind of manipulative to go into a situation hoping that it's gonna go that way. 
The men I've dated in my life who ended up being dusty were men who thought that by paying for all the dates and being very generous and thoughtful in the beginning meant that eventually that one day I would start paying for half of the dates or that I would pay for half of the vacations or start covering my own. Some people do this as a bait and switch. So I'm telling you, please don't do this and don't tolerate any man that puts you through that if you are the woman hoping to have some type of long-term relationship. You do not have to pay your dues. When you first meet somebody, you're literally getting the representative, the nicest version of themselves that is the most presentable that they can offer. Now, if you are meeting someone and they are already at a very low place, why would you see that person and think, oh, I can fix them. Oh, they could be better if they just had my help. I think that that comes from a place of low self-esteem. That comes from a place of low self-worth. Why don't you think that you deserve somebody who's on the other end of where they want to be in life? Why do you feel like you have to work up from the ground with an individual that you can build into some type of dream person? I went to go watch a comedian last week and one of the things that he said was that women will look around the room, find a man that they think is okay or think is kind of cute and go, hmm, yeah, I can work with that. No, thank you. Please don't do that to yourself. In fact, if you get into a relationship thinking, mm, I can work with this or I can work with that, and you're not coming from a place of, wow, this person's amazing. This person's already like got all of this going on for them. And rather you think that you can turn that person into somebody who does have all of that going for them. You are setting yourself up to be the giver who is going to give, give, give until you feel, wow, like, dude, why did I do that? Like they gave nothing back to me and they actually didn't even really want to be with me. So you're basically signing up to be a life coach is what I'm telling you. And I'm telling you that you should not do that. Show me a woman who is suffering financially, emotionally, academically, and maybe even professionally, and I'll show you a man that she is dating or is associated with that she has to put all of her energy into who is siphoning away from her ability to focus on herself. Anyways, this all ties into the bigger picture. This is just a little piece of the frame. So I'm going to move forward. Mixed signals is a signal. It's a message still. No message is a message. People who are purposely keeping you in the dark and in chaos are people who actually love that shit. They are people who are doing it on purpose. Let's stop pretending like they don't know what they're doing. If you are someone who has ever given out a mixed message, you definitely know that along the way you were like, how can I keep this going? What should I say? I like having them in my life, but I don't want to get rid of them. That's exactly how it is on the other end. If someone's keeping you in purgatory and they're not giving you the answers that you need, that's a sign. So let's not be PR agents for these people. Let's acknowledge it for what it is. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If the person you are talking to is 100% about you, they're going to make being in a relationship feel so easy. It's actually going to be annoying. I hate to say this, but if you don't know what the mixed message being sent to you is or what the non-message means, it means that they don't really want you. It means that they are happy with not having you in their life in the way that you want them. And it means that it's not mutual, which means that you should stop wasting your time and you should put that energy and devotion towards somebody else where it is mutual or where you are at least benefiting somehow. This next point is gonna go back to the dopamine and how it works in our brain. But this is one of the things that helped me rationalize my breakup the most and hopefully it can help you too. Our dopamine sources get rattled when we go into a breakup or when we leave a relationship that we had already allowed to give us a little high or to give us a little kick or to make us excited. When that relationship is over, your brain knows my dopamine source is gone and it is the equivalent of quitting crack cocaine and going through a withdrawal. It's so physically and emotionally painful. My point in telling you this is that what you're feeling is a chemical reaction in your brain. Does this make it any easier to move forward? Not necessarily. However, it can help you get rid of at least the physical aspect of the pain that you're going through. One of the ways that you can do this is by finding a new source of dopamine. This is why whenever you get into a breakup, people say, love yourself, give yourself good food, take care of yourself. But this is probably the type of depression where it is the absolute hardest to go through that. You probably don't wanna take care of yourself at all. Well, the sick and twisted thing about life is that when we don't wanna take care of ourselves, is when we need to do it the most. So my advice to you, and this is something that Andrew Huberman talks about on his podcast. He is a Stanford professor. He talks about neurology. 
He says that when you put yourself under physical exercise and activity, that is a way to recharge those dopamine sources and to get them from yourself through physical activity. That little rush that you feel after you kick your ass at the gym, that's what he's talking about. But here's the cool thing about the way that he describes it. When you see yourself after one month of working out and you're looking at all your results and you're impressed and amazed, you would think that's when the dopamine comes in. That's actually not the case. The dopamine comes in through enjoyment of the journey. So yeah, it's right when you're in the middle of holding that plank or it's right when you're taking that 10 second rest and you're like, let's go, let's do the next workout. So I want you guys to think about your breakups on a level of science. I want you to think about how you can increase the dopamine in your brain and what will do that for you. Is it good food? Is it shopping? Is it washing your hair and taking a shower and the feeling afterwards of just knowing, ah, I took care of myself? There's this saying, and it goes something along the lines of, if you spend every day trying to get better by 1%, then in 100 days, you would be 100% better. This applies in reverse as well with going backwards in life. Success and progression through life is not linear. It's a giant squiggle, so don't beat yourself up if every day is not a good day because it's just simply not possible. There are people who will tell you, oh, only spend one day being sad, then move on with the rest of your life. Or hey, maybe they say, ooh, spend one week being sad. This is some major self-projection here, but I sometimes do still process things that have happened from relationships like six years ago. Even if it was a one-week relationship or a one-year relationship, like it still lingers in my mind in a way where if something comes up, I look back on it and I'm like, oh my god, that's what was happening back then. Or that's who I was dealing with. So you will probably never have like 100% amnesia when it comes to this person. Like, yeah, we probably forget that we them or that we dated at all and that's actually a really great place to be however something will pop up and then you'll be like oh that's really what was going on so don't expect yourself to ever 100% forget or that hating them will somehow make it easier for you to not have them in your mental space it's actually the opposite your brain the part of you that feels love lights up when you feel immense hate so be very wary about harboring hate in your heart for somebody else this kind of took a random left but let me get back on topic when it comes to moving forward with your life every day and getting one percent better please make sure that you're engaging in a habit that is healthy that is repeatable that is something that you can actually turn into a habit it's possible if you do it for two weeks it can become that for you one of the final things I want to say about breakups is that we all go through it. We all deal with somebody who doesn't really want us. Or we dealt with someone who took advantage of our giving nature. Or, you know, even if it was a one-week relationship or a one-month relationship or seven-year relationship, there's still going to be a certain degree of pain that's experienced that we all go through. My final and final note on this topic is that if you are going through a breakup, you need to accept that it's over, that it's done, there is no going back. If you are doing the on again, off again thing, that's toxic. Once I've made my mind up about a person, I'm pretty much set. If I decide that that's a loser who doesn't deserve my time, then I'm done with it. But if it's somebody who kind of keeps me in purgatory or got rid of me and is breadcrumbing me and just keeping my hope alive, being alone is not a punishment. Yeah, it may feel bad to our social caveman brain when we're not getting along with a group of people and we may feel excluded and rejected. When a breakup is fresh, that is a time to feel the anger, feel the hurt. Did you ever gaslight yourself at any point in the relationship thinking, hmm, this is a red flag or that's a red flag? Have a conversation with yourself. Why did you overlook those red flags? Get back in touch with your emotion and intuition. Let that little voice that was trying to tell you something speak up and go full circle with it. It really just depends on how it was for you. Was it healthy? Was it toxic? The only way that you're going to get through it is by going right on through the messy, painful process of self-analyzation, journaling, working out, bettering yourself, and giving yourself a new purpose and a new narrative. Don't tell yourself, I've been used, I was stupid, I was idiotic. T take away that self-talk. Change the narrative to, I'm a person who is very generous. I'm a person who can be very giving. I'm a person who others can trust, who people can rely on. I'm a good person to have in other people's life and they would be lucky to have me. And if you need to tell yourself any type of story, 
keep it away from the negative ones that that have these narratives of self-victimization. I'm not saying that your relationship didn't put you in that position to where you probably genuinely were a victim, but if you are going to get past this process, accept that it's over, shift it into all the things that make you amazing, that make you good to have around, and tell yourself that's only gonna be for a certain type of person. That's going to be for somebody who truly deserves that side of me. You know, I thought that that was going to be everything that I had to say, but I actually do want to add in some other details. If you were dating somebody who was controlling or who was very vocal about their preference, about the type of haircut you have, the way that you dress, or even the way that you present yourself by telling you, oh, you're too much, or oh, don't post all over social media, all the things they told you not to do, go ahead and start doing them, okay? Go dye your hair that color, go get that bob haircut, wear the short skirt, buy the knee-high boots, post on Instagram. Do not let that person's opinion have any effect on your life anymore. Do the things that matter to you, that are passions of yours, that they were holding you back from, or go explore the rabbit holes that they were keeping you from exploring. Another thing I want to add is that if you must feel like posting breakup quotes or petty tweets or anything that is in reference to the breakup about how emotional you are, do not give them the satisfaction of viewing them. Do not give your mutuals the satisfaction of knowing that you are posting stuff like that. That needs to happen on a Finsta. That needs to be private. Keep that to yourself. Put it in a journal. This is why I tell you guys to do journaling. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what anybody else thinks about us is actually none of our business. Once you reach maturity or some aspect of it, you will stop feeling the need to fight every single person on every negative opinion that's put out there about you. We can't control how others perceive us and it's honestly none of our business what anybody thinks about you anyways. That's their thing going on in their head. Somebody who's very passionate about seeing you a certain way is not going to be swayed by anything you do or say. So just let them feel however they wanna feel and continue your existence as if they don't exist at all. So that's all that I have to say today. I hope you guys are not dealing with a breakup. If you are, I'm really sorry. There is life after love. Time heals all wounds. Don't let yourself get mentally stuck. Seek out therapy on YouTube. Maybe actually seek out therapy for real, you know, depending on how traumatic the relationship was for you. And just know it's something that we all deal with. Nobody's exempt from dealing with this type of pain. Rely on others, reach out to old girlfriends, talk to family members, whoever you possibly cut off because of that relationship, go back to them, say you're sorry, tell them you're hurting, you need help, be vulnerable. And times of need is when we make our friendships. And uh, that was something from Desperate Housewives with Gabrielle and Brie. I thought it was really cute, but it's also super true. So don't be afraid to ask for help. I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Fleeksy channel, whatever we do here. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, literally everywhere as Fleeksy. So don't be afraid to find me and to add me on my other socials. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Have a great day.